Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and we're here on a great time now. The laser is completely set up, ready to go. I have got um, wires, I've got my laptop. Um, we're gonna hook it up and yeah, start playing with the laser. All right, first up, we're gonna take uh, the included USB cable here. And just to give you a real quick on the controls, I have had the emergency stop uh, pushed this entire time. Um, that way nothing is gonna run, no matter how what I plug in or whatnot. So we're gonna leave that off. Obviously the laser switch, I don't have a key, I have an actual button. Um, it is up, in the up position, which means the laser is turned off. And of course the uh, Rudia um, 6445G, I think. But we're going to take our wires. Um, this is just standard USB, uh, what, type uh, A, I think. Um, just the rectangular ones. One side goes down in here. There's a couple of ports. Uh, really hard to see from that angle. Um, maybe I'll get a screenshot of it or something. But So we've got three switches. One goes to our chiller, and that's the top one. I wanted that easily accessible. Um, the second one down is our smoke extractor. And the third one down is our air pump, which pumps air into the, you know, into the nozzle. Next down, we've got a USB plug, which is where we're gonna plug this wire into. Next down from that is a actual port for a USB plug. And of course, the uh, ethernet port. Um, there's three ways that you can connect this up. Um, that you can run this machine. You can either run it via USB, which is the way we're gonna run it. Um, today, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to uh, load files onto a USB drive, bring it over to your over to your machine, load it up. There is an internal memory. Um, I don't know how big it is. I'll have to look that up. But I can transfer the files from the USB over to the internal memory, and that way, all I got to do is just walk up to the machine, select the file I want to run, and run it. This will be perfect for my production runs, um, cutting my acrylic. I could just put in my acrylic, hit go, and go do other things in the shop, and just occasionally look over and watch it watch it do its thing. Um, then, of course, the uh, we can run it via Ethernet. So running it via Ethernet or USB is going to be very similar. So the software side of things is going to be very similar, and we'll I'll show you the differences there. Um, but yeah, let's take a uh, closer look up on my laptop. Okay, here we are with a close-up view of my laptop. I have got light burn. Uh, when I first set this up, I didn't realize it, but um, you know, I was running a um, seven-watt JTEC laser on my Shapoko, which allowed me to get away with the uh, cheaper version of light burn. Whenever I set up my Rudia and I was trying to get things all worked out, obviously there was a post in the uh, in the users group related to it, but. Uh, turns out you have to have the DSP version of Lightburn that runs about $80 a year, I believe. Um, create manually. And of course, we do know it's a Rudia, so we're going to choose that. We're going to connect it up via USB. And of course, this is, I'm going to just leave it Rudia. My machine is 900 by 600. Now this should work if you got a larger machine or a smaller machine, just specify your settings. I'm gonna have it, or it is homing in the rear right, and you can tell that based on where the proximity switches are. If both switches, the, so the horizontal switch, the X, is there on the right side, the Y is way back there in the back, which implies rear right. And we're good, hit finish. We're going to switch to that and we're going to make it the default and hit OK. So now our machine is there. Clicking the buttons here on the screen allow me to control the machine as well as hitting home and the machine actually goes back to the back right position and sits there waiting. So next thing we're going to do is play around a little. So we've got that set, it, uh, set up. Uh, my machine does have a Z, so we will go into here. I will enable the Z axis, hit OK, and that will allow me to move the machine up and down. I just clicked it once, 
I haven't measured it, but I'm going to figure out how, how many, how, uh, how much that moves. There we go. So what I've got, and you'll, here, we'll open up my, open up the laser and we'll switch over to the, to the view here. So let me back up a tiny bit. What I've set up is I've got my grid bed on here, um, just because I don't want to have it outside the machine while I'm not, um, yeah. But I've got the machine in there. I've got the grid base. It's roughly the height of the, uh, of the machine there. I've got a little piece of a three-quarter inch um, MDF in here. And what we're going to do is do a little bit of leveling first. All right, I'll give you a really quick tour of the actual controls and settings. So we've got our emergency stop. I've got that pulled up now. Um, just twist it uh, clockwise. That'll release it and activate the entire machine. We've got our laser button, which I'm not going to activate that yet. We're not ready to do anything there. Um, we have our various controls here. I know there's lots of tutorials online, so I won't go into too many details. But needless to say, you've got your arrows here, and you can hold it down and move your machine around which is handy. We can have the, we've got the Z setting here. I believe that runs about a half millimeter or a millimeter. And we can see that right here on the screen. We can actually see where it's moving. Looks like it is moving six, nine, about half a millimeter. Or 0.7 millimeter, somewhere around there. Obviously that's a, up and down, that sort of thing. So we've got all that in your box. You should have come up with a uh, focus ruler. Now, I don't really know if this is how it's used, but this is the way I'm going to use it. So we've got a focus ruler. That's roughly seven millimeters. And what we can do is set it right down here on our stock. Set it right here just below the, uh, just below the machine. And I'm going to raise my Z up. Just enough till the laser is till the laser can go right underneath it, just to keep it a good distance away. But I'm going to keep that handy. And now my Z is set. Um, of course, my Y is all set. And now we can jump over to the computer and load up a load up a program. All right, here we are with a uh, close-up view of the uh, actual area. You can see I'm moving around the machine and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do in the software is I'm going to bring up, I'm going to pull up my logo. Let's pull a, uh, I'm going to pull in a CSV. It's okay. We're going to enlarge it a bit. Oop, that one's not very nice. Let's try a different one. Let's go down to logo. That's yeah, better. Make that a little larger so we can see it. You can see it here. Um, we can zoom in so we can see what's going on. Um, the machine automatically sets up um, a default cutting solution for this. So you can see each of the various components. Um, and I believe we can yeah, right click on the actual cut, of course, we're in the cut and layers section here. Just right click and it will uh, flash that particular section. Um, we've, I've just generically thrown it into a position on our, on our uh, board here. But what's cool is we can take a look. We can use this control over here click it, and I can s m manually jog the machine over to where it's going to cut. And then, of course, I can hit the frame button and watch the machine outline the logo. And you'll notice it's going to be a pretty large, large logo, which is pretty cool. Um, then we can do a couple of things. So some very, very basics. Obviously, this is 20% power. Um, it's going at 100% speed. So we're going to let it do its thing. We're not going to do any, make any changes. But you could double click on it if you wanted to change the power settings to make it cut or, or more powerful. 
just leave it default for this very first cut. Um, just make it all defaults. Let it go. Let's see what the machine can actually do. Um, so there's a couple of stages. So we've got our cut already, all by defaults and that sort of thing. If we hit start, we can watch it go, and let's do that. So the machine's going to act like it is cutting the entire thing. This is sort of a, a, a flash run, right? It's not going to do any actual cutting or anything like that. We don't need to turn on our, our smoke extractor or such. And it's going to run through the entire thing. And what's really cool is on the machine itself, you can see it is outlining where it is cutting. So let me get you back up here so you can see. There we go. So it's actually run through the cut like, it, like it's previewing. So now we can actually hit, if everything's working correctly, we can go ahead and power up the laser. So we push that button, uh, the laser switch over there on the right next to the emergency switch. That'll illuminate and we're ready to go. So, oh, one last thing. Um, we don't really need a blower for this too much. There's not much going on, um, but we do need to turn on the, uh, the extraction. So it will get pretty loud here. So bear with me. All right, and lastly, we're going to go ahead and hit start again, and this will actually fire up the laser and burn our wood. How cool is that? I'm going to turn off our blower, deactivate our laser, and we're good to go. Let's uh, pull that out and take a look at it. All right, I don't know about you, but that was super cool. Lift up our, oh, uh, before we do that, let me get it out of the way. I'll just, on my software, I'll just move over, go over to the move tab, hit home, that'll get my um, cutter out of the way. I think there's a setting as far as, a, if I remember right, you can go in and tell it whenever it's done cutting, it just returns to the uh, home position so it's all out of the way. Lift up our hood, and there we go. I'll have to, uh, that was another experiment. Um, here's your nice cut. You can actually tell there's a slight ridge to it because it did actually burn slightly in. So we could play around with power settings and that sort of thing. But that was super exciting. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I am using a Lightburn software. So if you haven't already, sign up for the Lightburn forums um, so you can get any help, ask questions, research, see what other people have asked. Um, highly recommended. Um, I'm definitely on there and I will be asking questions because there are a few things that I uh, still want to figure out. But yeah, hopefully you found that informative and stay with me for next time when we discuss uh, loading the file up on, or loading the design up onto a file, bring it over to our machine and run the cut again. Um, yeah, until, uh, until next time, remember don't just own your CNC, dominate it.